Natural Born Killers is quite an oddball of a film. At once it pushes the boundaries of accepted commentary in the Hollywood system, ostracizing itself from the mainstream conversation, while also gripping the hearts and minds of the masses with its fictional romantic crime duo, Mickey and Mallory Knox. Natural Born Killers drives right down the middle. It's as loved as it is hated. Critic reviews tend to call Natural Born Killers abrasive and lacking grace. And in fairness, it does touch sensitive subjects with an iron fist, leaping down with all of its weights upon thin, drifting lily pads. Natural Born Killers grabs you, and it doesn't let go. In fact, it grips tighter and tighter as the film progresses until you may find yourself lacking for air. And while some people love it, others hate it. Personally, I find it rather well directed, and the commentary is astute if brash. Yet, given the breadth of touchy topics it speaks on, it's rather hard to say, with certainty, whether Natural Born Killers was reviled by many for its method of criticism or for the criticism itself. At first, Natural Born Killers had the makings of a mainstream film. Sourced originally from a script written by Quentin Tarantino, Natural Born Killers was set to be a raunchy crime romp led by a Bonnie and Clyde recreation with emphasis on the romantic language of its troublemaking lovers. Oliver Stone, after acquiring the script, changed it drastically, and Tarantino reportedly has wanted nothing to do with Natural Born Killers since. Although more of an Oliver Stone film than a Quentin Tarantino film, the Tarantino element is what audiences often cling to emotionally. Mickey and Mallory are a rather adored couple, a demented pair of American sweethearts feeding on the sympathies of a cold and lonely nation. With the incredibly sincere romanticization of Mickey and Mallory, Natural Born Killers feels almost like a bona fide Tarantino movie, but Oliver Stone's contributions to the social commentary lead it astray, or at least Tarantino would view it that way. Had it been helmed by Quentin Tarantino, Natural Born Killers would have turned out an entirely different way. The already heavy romanticization of Mickey and Mallory would have been twofold, and the social criticisms would have been largely ejected. Essentially, everything loved about Natural Born Killers would have been fed, and the parts which drove many people off would have been cut. Natural Born Killers, although derived from a Quentin Tarantino script, departs from the Tarantino style in one fundamental way. It gets in the way of its own fun. If incorporative of Tarantino staples, Natural Born Killers is quick to ruin a good time. While its immoral crime couple are painted in romantic strokes, Mickey and Mallory are not lovers an audience can comfortably sympathize with. What you would have unquestionably adored had Tarantino been the sole voice of Natural Born Killers, under Stone's direction, you now questionably adore. And that insecurity thrown into the mix is found in one special sticking point of Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers. Where Tarantino would have made the characters out of clay, essentially providing no backstory or root cause for their miscreants, Oliver Stone defines a source for their anger, their rage, and their violence. Tarantino's appeal and shock value is largely found in his nonchalant, matter-of-fact depiction of violence. Not to say that his brand of gory imagery lacks luster or a gripping quality, but rather that his depiction of violence is uniquely straightforward, uninterrupted, and unchallenged. It comes from nowhere, and as soon as it arrives, it departs. Arising like an urge and an impulse to breathe, somebody will die in a Tarantino movie, and it will be treated as the passage of bodily fluid. Tarantino has this tendency to equate violence to mere bodily release, something implicitly sexual in nature. Is that as good for you as it was for me? As if relieving oneself or jerking off, somebody will kill another human being in a Tarantino movie and take joy in it. The want for blood and killing is like some bug in your system, and it squirms and begs and craves and it has a desire all of its own, and the one true way to get it out of your system is to indulge it. Torturing someone is like making love. Gunning a man down is like taking a shit. That bug builds up in you, and there's no way to get rid of it. You can only satiate it. 
Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction embody this best, characterizing the gangsters as shallow men of impulse, suddenly possessed by violence, and immediately driven by craving. Mr. Blonde and Jules are killers with explicitly noted appetites, eating fast food either before or after doing the deed. Links between the everyday animal functions of the human body and the obscene brutality of gangsters are made abundantly clear in Tarantino's early work. Butch eats a Pop-Tart after killing Vincent. If you want to know something, he won't tell you. Cut off one of his fingers. The little one. Then tell him his thumb's next. After that, I'll tell you if he wears ladies' underwear. I'm hungry. Let's get a taco. You eat, you shit, you screw, and you kill. And why? That's just nature, baby. Natural Born Killers is very aptly titled. Intentionally ironic, the whole film is an examination of the media and the public at large, and how general conception of serial killers is wholly unfinished. We see the adults, and exhibits utterly zero fascination for the kids who they used to be, instead content to judge who they are portrayed as on the television. In Tarantino's style, Mickey and Mallory are made in romantic strokes. By the end of the film, we're cheering for these psychopathic murderers to get away with it, and we almost forget that they are atrocious people. Natural Born Killers is cited as controversial for this very reason. A film quite nearly idolizing a duo of killers was sure to draw negative attention, as it did from a sitting US senator at the time of its release. Like any Tarantino film, Natural Born Killers left a sour taste in the mouths of critics and the media bigwigs for its indecency. Yet, Tarantino directed films which romanticize their immoral casts of characters in a comparable fashion to Natural Born Killers did not garner nearly as much controversy as Natural Born Killers. For as crazy and avant-garde as it supposedly was, Pulp Fiction somehow won 1995's Best Screenplay, the same year that Natural Born Killers was entirely snubbed at the Oscars. Quinn Tarantino likes to pretend he's the Hollywood bad boy, and throw around his careless abandon for social norms and media decency. And in all fairness, he has generally garnered that reputation. But, for as much as Tarantino was supposedly the big bad wolf of Hollywood, pressing back against a system of stiff-necked squares, Tarantino has been surprisingly welcomed by that system. Pulp Fiction was funded by big Hollywood titans, and was nominated for multiple Oscars, getting outright approval from the Academy via a Best Screenplay win. And Natural Born Killers, which does a very Tarantino-style song and dance, was bashed and left on the curb to die by the Academy, receiving not a single nomination. And when Pulp Fiction was so welcomed, it's hard to believe that Natural Born Killers was so scorned for merely sentimentalizing killers. No. Surely another element of the film sparked the defensive nodes of the media industrial complex. More than Mickey's charm, Mallory's vivaciousness, or even their shared happily ever after, what I think Natural Born Killers pushed the boundary on was its examination of childhood, and in doing so, blatantly deconstructing the popular and adored Tarantino narrative. They were just born this way. All right, I, I went to the theaters once to see it, and then the scene that I'm going to say was so bad that I had to leave. Since then, I've like seen little bits of it on cable or something but it was that horrible sitcom i love mallory oh, with rodney yeah, yeah. dangerfield tarantino's contributions to natural born killers are quite obvious natural born killers does not deviate from the bodily function equivocation regarding its violence mickey and mallory are as much a sex symbol as they are a violence one Untethered, anti-system, anti-society, misanthropic killing is, as Natural Born Killers portrays it, sexy. 
This was Tarantino's foremost contribution, I have no doubt. As for Stones, I suspect that he had more to do with the I Love Mallory sequence than Tarantino. In contrast to the director who prioritizes ejaculatory killing, murder on a timer, effect without cause action, and his psycho gangster affairs, Oliver Stone digs surprisingly deep to the root very early on in Natural Born Killers, and with a brevity so as to direct disdain towards the society which would ignore, or God forbid, laugh any of this abuse off. He approaches the matter of child abuse in the only way anyone can in this society, with a filthy grin about the whole problem. Natural Born Killers punctures very deep, very early, and only for what seems like a moment. Yet, the remainder of Natural Born Killers is haunted by the dislodged visions of nightmarish childhoods pushed out of consciousness, but never forgotten. Intentionally, Natural Born Killers erroneously goes on with the expected media slogans, regurgitating the tired lines said of and by the killers that they're simply born this way. And never is it quite believable. With even just the little that we know, how could it be? Tarantino's trademark approach to evil is retained in Oliver Stone's version of the script, and seemingly mocked up and down. Like Mr. Blonde or Jules, Mickey and Mallory kill as if it's their way of pissing, as if it'll make their next kiss sweeter. But unlike Tarantino, who presents a craving without a source, Oliver Stone makes certain that the source is spotted, ignored, and brushed off as it may be, planting a nagging awareness in the audience for just about the entire runtime of the film. It's quite impossible to enjoy Natural Born Killers in the devilish way you would a Tarantino film when pestered by the undying consideration for the origin of these killers. Natural Born Killers scared the media and political America, more than Pulp Fiction even. To most audiences and the Academy, Tarantino's characters, whose evil is unexplained yet redeemed, are far less threatening than Stone's, whose evil is explained if unredeemed. Natural Born Killers refuses its audience an irresponsibly good time. The undeserved satisfaction resolving Pulp Fiction's moral dilemma is outright absent in Natural Born Killers, which is the safest explanation as to why Oliver Stone's film was snubbed at the Oscars. Natural Born Killers is in many ways uncomfortable and quick to nauseate. It's a barrage of gloves-off attacks on not just the American media machine, but the cult of child abuse it perpetuates and intentionally fails to challenge. That the crucial years of childhood can set two people off on a lifelong spiral of sin and violence from which they never really return is the implicit and unpleasant basis of the film. All in all, not quite wrapping itself up in a reassuring manner, Natural Born Killers is rightfully off-putting and uneasy. The concerns it raises are never quite assuaged. However, if Tarantino's reaction is any indication, it was not the lack of pleasant resolution which wrecked Natural Born Killer's chances so much as the film's central criticisms did. Tarantino likes to imagine himself as the Hollywood bad boy who offends the wrong people, yet the Academy has welcomed him with open arms. Evidently, Tarantino has only gone so far as to offend the right people. Meanwhile, Oliver Stone clearly messed with the wrong crowd, and I can only really see one rogue variable explaining how. What Oliver Stone brought to Natural Born Killers is what assured it its death, a blatant mockery of America's attitude towards child abuse, the one truest source of all serial killers in media history. Were it his creation and his creation alone, I'm not sure Natural Born Killers would have had any time in the sun at all. Surely, the greatest drawing appeal of the film often seems to be what Tarantino brought to the table, the adored Mickey and Mallory romance, perhaps the one thing keeping it afloat. Where critics were scandalized at Natural Born Killers' critical acuity, audiences were enamored with the beacons of love which Mickey and Mallory were. Yet, as critics, and even Tarantino himself, were horribly off-base snubbing Natural Born Killers on the basis of its heavy-handed social criticisms, audiences were equally misled in their instant attachment to 
and idolization of Mickey and Mallory. It's deceptively easy and not truly happy. A union formed from trauma between two broken people cannot be. Neither lover is present enough to check the other. There's no system of virtue or compassion. Explicitly, this marriage built on unconditional love has one condition. No virtue. 